to Turkey and the 2020 International Antalya Challenge, a world ranking event, the first in a while. I'm Karen Bashir and joining me for this coverage is World Archery's Chris Wells. Chris, good afternoon. Uh, what can we expect today? Yeah, hi, Karim. It's fantastic to be back looking at some live archery. It's a shorter event than normal. It's only been three days, and we're only going to see four finals, but I'm really looking forward to seeing some fantastic international archers compete here in Turkey. Of course, it is the first uh, ranking event in a while. Um, do you know what measures have been put in place specifically to run this world ranking event? And we're seeing some footage here from the earlier stages of the competition. This is the qualification. You can see that the archers were, were shooting one, one per target. Um, there's only one archer collecting their arrows from each of the targets. In normal competitions, we see four archers per target. And um, social distancing has been enforced. Masks have been enforced as well. Yeah, well, as you mentioned, we're covering four gold matches in this session. And we're going to begin with the women's compound final. Well, as you can see, it's Andrea Marcos of Spain up against Elizaveta Kanaezeva of Russia in this first gold medal match. Uh, interesting uh, qualification over the last couple of days, Chris. Yeah, so they started with qualification on Friday. Eliminations took place yesterday and, and finals today on Sunday. There's no team or mixed team event to this event. It's only individual. Andrea wasn't the top seed, but she shot a fantastic couple of matches to make her way through to the final here. Uh, Elizabeth Kneizeva, we don't know too much about her, a new right. member of the Russian team. So interested to see how she performs on these finals fields. Well, it is going to be Andrea Marcos, who came through the ranking round uh, fifth to shoot first. It's the start of the first end. Well, two tens to get us underway. Chris, in these early stages, uh, just to clarify how the scoring works for compound archery. Compound Archery is a 15 arrow match, straight score, highest number wins at the end. I'll shoot in five ends of three. This is the first end, four more to follow afterwards. Nine. Well, they've matched each other so far. 20 seconds per arrow per archer. Saving the best to last, so a 29, and Kanaezeva needs a 10 to keep things all square. Yeah. And both of them matching each other throughout their 29s apiece. Solid start, Chris. Uh, are we expecting some high scores today? Yeah, well, the, the scores have been high all week, actually. I don't know if it's because um, it's the first event of the season, re realistically, even if it's quite late, uh, but also it's been the... Um, uh, the single arrow, uh, singles to archer per target, you know, not, you're not seeing different different arrows on your target, easy to spot, focused on yourself. So scores have been fantastic throughout the week. But Antalya also traditionally fantastic fields, some fantastic scores have been shot there, world records through the years. Yeah, the conditions looking pretty good. There is a little bit of a breeze, but we see the uh, arrows being retrieved by the agents and you can see everyone's wearing those special surgical masks as part of the measure to protect athletes and the officials alike throughout this tournament. So all square after the first end. So it's time to get ready for end number two. Now, Andrea Marcos shot first in the first end so she will get things underway again for the second end came through that ranking round ranked fifth did marcos and beat uh, yes in boston and natalia avdieva en route to this final Nice, Ava 
she was ranked second after the ranking round, shooting a 693. She took out uh, Alvarez of Spain and Sousa of Turkey en route to the final and has matched Marcos again at the start of this second end. So a little opportunity here for the Russian. And she's got a perfect 30 and sneaks in to the lead. Chris, it's interesting with uh, the obvious uh, hiatus from competition international events, the, the athletes have been a little bit unsure about, uh, you know, what they're preparing for, what they're training for. How difficult has it been to stay focused? Yeah, well, you don't have an international season, but, but more importantly, you don't know if there's going to be an international season. I think it's very difficult to keep your training routine in, uh, you know, in place and, and difficult to stay motivated. So it's been fantastic that we've been able to, to have this event at the end of the year. And hopefully the learnings from it, um, the learnings for the athlete preparing it and running it with the restrictions really help us going into next year. And we can get back to a normal competition schedule. As an outside, outside sport, archery does uh, perhaps have a little advantage over some of the other Olympic sports in terms of uh, getting back to proper competition. Yeah, absolutely. A social distancing isn't really a problem here in, in the competition. You can see the targets are a little bit further apart than they are, are normally are. Um, archers are wearing masks as soon as they stop off the line. There's no real need to contact each other or be too close. So um, in terms of getting back to the sport, I don't think it's going to be a problem. The biggest problem right now is travel restrictions. Quite. Well, it's time for end number three. And Marcos will shoot again to start this end off. Ten. That's now because she's trailing, but starts off with a 10. And these scores are very impressive indeed. Marcos has just dropped two points. Ten. Nyan's Ava has only dropped one so far. Well, there is going to be a measure on Naya Zaver's second arrow. She could do with a correction here, but a big shake there. Nine. And pulls it over to the right-hand side. So, Chris, uh, some nervy moments from uh, the Russians. Certainly that second arrow, your, your thoughts? No, she shot really well in the first two ends. That, that eight that went left, that's going to hurt her in this, in this match. She had the advantage. Um, she's allowed Andrea Marcos to come back in. You heard Ruben Montes, her coach, say a little bit low after that second shot. And then she put the third one a little bit low again, popping something on her hand. Maybe her grip on her release isn't quite right, but full level. I don't think that one will be marked up. That is going to be an eight. Full uh, level after nine arrows of this final. So 27 for Kanai Zeva. Chris is correct, and that will, as Mr. Wells suggested, bring both archers back on level scores. Oh, I think you all heard it there. They are square at 86 apiece after the three ends. The agent still retrieving the arrows. Uh, the big shake from uh, the Russian, just a, a bad shot, or... Wind? I mean, the wind looks pretty good, Chris. 
Well, the difference between these two arches is Andrea's using a, a thumb release, Knaiseva is using an index figure release. Index figure, you really choose to shoot it rather than going through a shot process that's more natural. When you choose to shoot something, you can get those little wobbles coming, coming in. It's all about mental fortitude um, and delivery. She came back and she shot a good shot. A nine is still an excellent arrow. Well, it's time for end four, and they're all square. Another wide second arrow from Knaiseva. Big opportunity here for Marcos. A 10 will put her into the lead, whatever the Russian shoots. Ten. And that is on the line, so it will be a 29 for Marcos in this fourth end. Nine. And pulling that arrow right again. Another 27. And, uh, well, this one's shot one way or another here. Excuse the pun. Uh, Chris, another weird second arrow from the Russian. Any hints as to why? Uh, they're, they're both shooting so, so fast. It's, it's quite a, a frantic pace in this final. Guys, Ava, I think she just wasn't on the middle. It didn't look like a bad shot. It didn't look like uh, she wobbled like she did in that, in that end previously. I think she just had it not in the center when she let it go, and it dropped a bit, a bit low and left. That's why it's 58. Yeah, well, they're just uh, down there. You can see the Russian agent just checking at the scores as they should do. Uh, one point deficit now for the Russian. She was one point ahead after two. Finds herself one point behind after four. And that Russian agent is Natalia Avdieva, the reigning world archery champion. Not a bad person to have down at the targets for you. Well, especially since she's uh, just taken the bronze in the playoff match. So she'll know what the conditions are like out there. As uh, the range looks like it's almost clear, it's time for the fifth and final end. Well, Elisaveta Knaiseva will shoot first here. Her job now is to start piling on the pressure on her Spanish opponent, Andrea Marcos. She needs tens, I fancy, right now. Ten. Ten. No signs of pressure on the face of Andrea Marcos. Gold medal at stake here with a two-point lead and just two arrows to go. Marked as a nine for the Russian. Ten. Fabulous grouping. That will give her confidence going into a final arrow. Another ten for the Russian. Nine. She would hope, but it's another nine. So a 28 to finish. Slightly longer hold. It's a little lower than the other two, but it's a perfect 30 to finish for Andrea Marcos. She finishes on a 145. Maybe the second arrow of the Russians will get marked up to a 10, uh, but I'm afraid that is not enough. It's Andrea Marcos with the gold medal here in Antalya. Chris, Fantastic. interesting match there, wasn't it? Yeah, fantastic result by Andrea Marcos. She shot exceptionally well. Had a couple drop low in the in the kind of middle of the match, middle couple of ends, but but she pulled it back. And those last first two arrows of the last end were absolutely fantastic. I'm really chuffed for Andrea as well. She's a she's a lovely, lovely lady. She's a, she's a physiotherapist, and her business this year has been really badly affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. She hasn't been able to to work. 
Uh, she hasn't uh, been able to earn money like she would normally. So to, to finish this year with a win at this tournament is, is well deserved and a fantastic story. Well, there we have it. Andrea Marcos of Spain confirmed as the compound women's gold medalist here at the Antalya International 2020. Well, up, up and down match there. Do you think a little bit of an experience from uh, the Russian opened the door? Well, absolutely. Um, she, she was in command early on. Marcos had to, had to you know, uh, fight to get back into it. Uh, she could have closed the door, Elisaveta. She couldn't do it. And Andrea comes out uh, as the winner. I'm interested to see what that was like. I'd like to, I'd like to learn what that was like to, um, to shoot without the spectators in a finals field, but without any kind of crowd. Was there the same pressure? Was there the kind of same atmosphere that, that Andrea is used to? Because she's shot in finals before. Yeah, it is interesting, isn't it? The new, the new measures put in place, obviously, with the uh, officials and uh, the athletes uh, having certain restrictions in place that aren't there normally. Plus, the, the, as you mentioned, Chris, the difficulties of travel uh, that uh, pose problems for everybody involved in the events. Uh, but not having a crowd, well, we've seen it in other sports, uh, it does make for a slightly di different atmosphere. But of course, this is a world ranking event, so there's pressure with that. Yeah, absolutely. This is the first world ranking event in a long time. We're now in a transition period. So any points they, they win here will be added to their world ranking point total. Um, they won't depreciate until the, the start of next season because there's obviously still work to do to get back to the full international calendar uh, that we're used to. Uh, are we expecting uh, many more world ranking events like this to be shown on uh, or with the, the help of World Archery, Chris? Yeah, we're hoping to expand our coverage of the world ranking events, actually. Um, obviously, the COVID-19 pandemic has forced us to look at new ways of doing broadcast, of, of showcasing archery. And, and for the first time, you and I, Karim, are doing this remotely. Uh, it's quite different. Uh, we're not sitting together. We're not there. But it works. Well, coming up next, it's the compound men's gold medal match. And, uh, well, if there was a crowd there, they would probably make, be making the most noise so far because Evren Chiran from Turkey will be taking part in this final. Here come the athletes. Target number one. Representing Turkey, Evren Çoğran. <laughs> Opponent, target number two. Representing Poland, Lukas Krizibilski. Well, there are the athletes, uh, Evren Chiran of Turkey on target number one and Luka Zerbeski of Poland on target number two. The number one and number two seeds after the ranking round, Chiran shot a 7-10 and Zerbeski shot a 7-05 and they've shot their way through to this gold medal match. Uh, they're almost ready to go and it looks like it is the pole who shoot first. It's already time for end number one. Well, Chris, what can we expect here from these two? Yeah, kyron has been shooting uh, an excellent um, event. He shot his personal best in competition by four points. Previous was 7.06, hit a 7.10. But Wukash here, first final at a major international. Ten. Slightly longer hold there, and that just pulled off to the left. Early opportunity here for the home favourite. And it's a great start. Good grouping right in the middle. Beautiful start from Evren Kyran. 
Uh, that is a fabulous perfect 30. Chris, you mentioned about not having the crowd behind you, but uh, Tyran, of course, is well, pretty much at home here in Antalya. Uh, will, will that help him? Yeah, absolutely. The, the Turkish team is actually resident in Antalya at this field. This is where they train. Um, so they, they're used to this field. They're used to how it shoots. They're used to the wind conditions. But uh, we spoke to some of the team earlier this, this week and um, uh, Yashmin Anagos, the Rikov Archer, said it wasn't really an advantage because, because they kind of lose that, 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 that sense of, of, of occasion, that sense of an international event. Everyone, though, very determined. He won the World Cup stage here in Antalya back in 2016, I believe it was. So he knows how to perform in Antalya. Yeah, and of course, they're just used to the facilities. They know how, uh, you know, what the quickest route to the loo is, for example. All those simple things that can make a tiny little bit of difference to, uh, to a performance. Uh, and so far, it's working out for Chiran. He, is, uh, he hasn't missed the 10 ring. He's on a perfect 30. He's on home soil. And the pressure is all on Wukash Zabersky. They're almost ready to go. And it will be time for end Number two. As you can see, the targets are clear here, shooting over 50 meters. And Wukash Pabersky, trailing by three points already, will start the second end. Chris, pressure on the pole already. Yeah, absolutely. Kyron shot 148 in his matches, two matches, both 148s. Uh, Wukash has, has dropped more points in this first end than Kyron has uh, in each of his matches so far. He's got a big hole to climb out of. Just what it needs to start things off, but uh, Kyron looking very, very composed indeed. Nine. Nine. A little bit of an adjustment from the Turkish archer. Ten, ten, ten. And a perfect 30 is a great answer to a 27 in the first end. Ten. And a great finish produces a 29 for Chiron, but the gap has closed by a single point after the second end. Good response, Chris, from the Polish archer. Yeah, and there's still a long way to go in this one. If he keeps shooting 30s, um, there's plenty of time for everyone just to drop a couple out. And it's, it's not difficult to drop a couple out. Remember, they, these targets are 50 meters away, and the difference between a 10 and a 9 is, is millimeters, uh, even less at, at, the, at the archer end. Yeah, they're just... Uh, checking the scores and retrieving the arrows there, just marking the targets as well as they always do. Uh, but gap closed by one, very important for Wukash Zabersky, trailing by three after the first. It's a, a big deficit to get back, even with four ends to go. how tough it is to pull those arrows from that target. These, these bows weighing 60 pounds, so about 20 kilos. Uh, you think that they, they drive those arrows down range with quite some force, less than a second from bow to target. I'm told the uh, fastest uh, moving object in Olympic sport, the arrow from a bow. Excellent fact. Well, Obviously, this is the Olympic <laughs> discipline. So. Yes, indeed. Uh, the compound bows uh, have some mechanics. But it is time for end number three of this gold medal match. Still trailing. Wukash Zabersky will shoot first. But he's closed the gap by a point. Can he do the same here? Ten. 
Nine. Nine. Just clipped his own arrow there, but looking to make a little adjustment to his sight. Ten. So all square. One arrow left. Well, they're matching each other there. It just looked to me, Chris, like uh, Zabeski had uh, just started to sort of settle in after that eight in the first end. Uh, he looked like his uh, action was so much better. Yeah, and, and the pace of the match has slowed down quite a lot. Kyron was uh, was kind of at his normal, casual pace at the start, but Wukash kind of started fast and frantic. You don't want to rush things. I mean, archery, you've got 20 seconds to shoot your arrow. It's a lot of time. You don't need to to push too fast, to, to rush and, and try and get the arrow out with, with loads of time left on the clock. Slow and deliberate, and, and as long as Wushas, Wukash keeps that kind of deliberate action, that deliberate timing, he's got a chance to get back into this. And he has, but uh, Tyran shooting just two into the nines, the rest of them are tens, uh, and the difference at the moment is that one eight right at the beginning for Wukash Jabeski. Still two more ends to go as the athletes prepare for end number four. Well, the range is safe to shoot. And it will be Jabeski who will shoot first on target number one. Trailing by two. Nine. Didn't look as happy with that one. So what would you say, Chris? Conditions or pressure there? Both pulling away from the tens. Yeah, that's more points than Tyron's dropped in any of his other matches. It is a final. There is something on this. It matters. And that, you know, that does play on your mind. Nine. Well, adjusted perhaps just a little bit too much. So one left, one right. Uh, perhaps Chiron will put this one right down the middle. What can Zabeski do? Ten. Well, he gets it into the 10. So a 29 in the fourth end for the pole. 28 is the best Chiron can get. Ten. And he does indeed get a 28, but it's another point back for the pole. And he looks like he's really settled into this Chris uh, interesting intriguing position we find ourselves in going into the fifth end only three arrows left to go and Kyron's still in a commanding position here he's still got the leads but Lukash has a chance he just needs to put the pressure on keep shooting his shot keep trying to hit some tens and hope Kyron stumbles a bit more yeah very intriguing little match up here Tyran on home soil, where he trains in Antalya on 116, and leading Wukash Zabeski, the Polish athlete, uh, by just a single point, having led by three after the first end. Well, once the arrows are retrieved from the target, it will be time for the fifth and potentially final end in this gold medal match. So, Chris, who's going to be feeling the pressure more here? 
it's difficult to lead in archery. It's difficult to chase, but it's <laughs> difficult to lead. At the end of the day, Wukash um, he has nothing to lose. He's losing at this point. Um, Kairan, he's in command, you know, not hitting the middle is easier than hitting the middle at this point for him. He's got to, he's got to stay focused, uh, stay in command, and not, and not let that doubt creep into his mind. Yeah, all to play for, for Wukash Zbierski. And he will shoot first on target number one. And, well, he's got to try and pile these ones into the middle to pile the pressure on his Turkish opponent. Good start. Hmm. Not a whiff of tension there from Chiran. Pressure switches back over to target number one. Hmm. So it's come down to the last arrow advantage with Chiran. Zabeski needs a 10 to keep the pressure on. Ten. He gets a 10, a perfect 30 to finish. Is it enough or can Chiran get the 10 to take the gold? Nine. A quick release that time. It's a 29. Chris. After all of that, are we going to be all level on scores? It looks like it. And, and think about that. Just, just 12 hours ago, Wukash was three points behind Kairan. But he, he stayed focused. He stayed positive. He, he, he shot his match. And Kairan just let him come back little by little. End of this, we're all tied. It looks like we're going to go to a shoot-off. Well, an amazing example of composure from Wukash. Jabeski, he was trailing by three, as Chris said, after the first end. And to be honest with you, Jaran didn't shoot badly after that, given uh, the fact that, uh, well, he shot a 148, 147, and 149, uh, the pole, against a 149, 148, 148 for Chiran through qualification, through the brackets to get here, both shooting their lowest scores of a 145. I suppose that is the pressure of the finals. So, Chris, uh, a shoot-off is uh, what we have in store, subject to uh, confirmation. How's that going to work? A very simple. One arrow by each archer, closest to the middle wins. If both of them shoot an X, which isn't a 10, it's a, the inner 10, then um, they'll shoot again a second time. That's a rule that was brought in just a couple of years ago, but, but primarily closest to the middle wins. Well, it's taken a while for uh, us to get back to archery. And do follow that hashtag, hashtag back to archery. Tell us how you're getting back on to the shooting line uh, here. We haven't had to wait long in our return to archery. It's time for a shoot off. So there we have it, one arrow each, sudden death, unless they both shoot the inner 10 ring, the X ring, then we will have a second arrow each, closest to the center, will win, shooting first on target number one for the compound men's gold is Wukash Jabeski. Another quick release. That's a 10. An X for Chiran, and he's taken gold in Antalya. Ten. He's hit the 10 as well, so we will go to a measure. And Chris, on first sight, I think the pole may have snuck this. Yeah, a fantastic result if he has. It looks closer to the middle, but, but let's wait until the judges confirm. A real shame for Chiran, who's had a fantastic week. Just wasn't able to deliver a, 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 an excellent arrow in that single arrow shoot-off, it looks like. 
And there we go. After a brilliant start from homeboy Everin Chiran taking a three-point lead after the first end, a composed performance from the young Wukash Zabeski has given the pole the gold medal in a shoot-off in the compound men's final. What a fantastic performance and a fantastic uh, result for Wukash. Um, it's his first medal at an international event. He's the, he's the silver medalist of the Polish National Championships, the current vice champion, if you will. Uh, he came up against the, the home favourite, Evren Kyra. No crowd to support Evren, but still, he would have been comfortable going into that final and thought he was the favourite. Lukasz behind after the first three arrows, but came back, came back into it, edged his way back in and delivered a better arrow in the shoot-off to take it. Well, very, very impressive performance from uh, the uh, young Polish archer to take gold in the compound men's well that that is the uh, compound tournament done and dusted here in antalya but of course we have the recurve gold medals to come very shortly two more of those uh, they're gonna have to just reset the field of course because uh chris we're switching from a 50 meter range to a 70 meter range yeah, compound archers, they shoot 50 meters in international competition. Recurve archers, the style that you see at the Olympics, they shoot 70 meters and a bigger target. Uh, 20 meters different doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually is um, not easy. Not easy to shoot over these distances. It's, it's difficult to see just how far it is as well. If you start archery, obviously, you'll, you'll be at something much closer. It takes a lot of time and effort, a lot of practice to get up to the, the full international competition distance and be competent at it as well. Yeah, but it uh, looks like the uh, event organisers and officials are doing a great job already getting the targets down to the 70 metres. If we take a look over uh, this beautiful seaside town of Antalya, weather's still pretty good there as well this time of year. Of course, if you can get there in these strange times. Uh, but as you can see, a spectacular archery venue, uh, Turkey, in fact, Istanbul, uh, what, a couple of hours flight away. Uh, actually houses the oldest archery centre uh, in the world. So the sport is incredibly popular here and you can just think the fans must have been chomping at the bit to get to this one. But unfortunately, it's behind closed doors. Chris, uh, whilst we wait for the field to be reset, uh, just another question about sort of Olympics, Olympic qualification, ranking events, the calendar. Uh, do World Archery have any eyes on what might be happening uh, in the near or medium term future? Yeah, unfortunately, we were quite far through the Olympic qualification process already. So a number of teams and a lot of archers have already won spaces for their countries. The, the, the main outstanding things to go were the, the continental qualifiers in Oceania, Europe and the Americas. And then the final qualifier, uh, which is the last chance to win places, which would have been at the Archery World Cup in Germany, in Berlin this year. But that's been that's been changed to Paris. So we're we're hoping to host all of the continental qualifiers at the start of 2021 and then do the final qualifier at the third stage of the Hyundai Archie World Cup in Paris. Um, if, if they can't happen, I mean, and, and it'll be the travel restrictions that really stop that from going ahead more than anything, then there's, there's procedures to, to award the places in a fair and transparent manner. So, you know, the, the right people go to the Olympics in Tokyo next year. Yeah, I mean, very unlike archery, uh, the pandemic has given us all a bit of a moving target. Uh, we've seen some competitions and some sports get back uh, to some kind of normality, albeit behind, uh, predominantly behind closed doors. And uh, oh, there's a virtual running of the London Marathon today. Uh, only the elite athletes actually taking part in a short course that they'll run 19 laps of. And, and here we're, we're getting back to archery with our first world ranking event in a while. And Chris, uh, they're, they're, I'd like to say they're spectators, but obviously they're officials who've uh, been working here all week and uh, get a chance to sit in the stands. Uh, are we expecting, you've alluded to, to expecting perhaps a, a few more of these world ranking events uh, being brought to uh, the archery audience around the world uh, through through streaming? 
Uh, yeah, we've used this, uh, this, this hiatus period as an opportunity to think about how we do things and how we can broadcast or show more archery. So normally at our Hyundai Archery World Cup events, there's a, a crew that we take to do the production. Uh, right now, we're just taking local television, national television, TRT, who are showing it live in Turkey and they're contributing to us, but it looks like we're going to hear from the archers. You were behind early in that archers. match. How did you come back? Uh, yes, I must uh, think about my shooting and keep it together uh, to, to make good shots. And and I will do it. <laughs> what was going through your head in that shoot off? Uh, I think nothing because uh, I I try to to uh, make a good shot and don't thinking about how it uh, will be. So make a good shot and and it's everything. It's been a difficult year. What does this win mean after a long tournament? It is. Uh, yeah, this season is very difficult, uh, but I train hard in, in home and uh, it makes uh, results at international competitions. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Uh, Lukasz Szebeski there from Poland who just took the men's gold in the compound discipline. Uh, just talking about uh, one, his uh, preparation for the shoot off, nothing going through his mind, apparently. Uh, hopefully his process was going through his mind. Well, clearly it was because he did take the goal, having trailed by three points in the early stages of that final. Uh, but he also talked about how difficult it has been on the circuit with the so few competitions and uh, obviously getting ready to prepare for the return to competition for him here in Antalya. So Chris, uh, just going back, I'm sure we're going to get another interview coming up soon, but uh, we, we talked about this uh, remote style of commentary and uh, they, there was an example of them uh, throwing us a spanner in the works and not really quite knowing when uh, these interviews are coming. But it doesn't mean we can bring real live archery. Yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? Imagine if we could do this uh, you know, five, ten times uh, next year. We would see far more tournaments, far more tournaments at an excellent level, let's be honest. This is great to watch, great to experience, and great to see um, some archers that we've never seen on the finals field before taking part in a real international. Yeah, great for them to also share with their friends and family. You can watch me here, even though we've got no crowd. Uh, but look, we've had the compound tournament. Uh, it's time to switch our attention to the Olympic discipline and two recurve gold medal matches. Coming up first, it is the recurve women's final. Not quite ready on the range yet. Uh, you can see uh, a couple of archers there now. That's uh, looking down the site. Is that preparation, I suspect, for the men's final? Because that's coming up after the women's final. Two matches to go here in Antalya. So, Chris, uh, let's switch our attention to the athletes themselves. Uh, we talked about preparation. Um, how important is it for them to get back, even behind closed doors, into proper international competition? It's difficult, you know. Archery, yes, you do the same thing. It's all about consistency, rhythm, repetition. But getting in tournament shape isn't, isn't you know, something you can do on a daily basis. There's the mental approach. There's the physical approach. You've got to be at peak condition. Um, repeating the same action over and over again, the same process, it, it requires training. Yeah? You don't want to be at your, your very best all year round because you'll never be at your very best if you, if you try to maintain that maximum. So not having a, a proper a tournament schedule that you know is uh, committed, you know that's um, uh, definite at the start of the year, very difficult to adjust your training around that. I hope that a lot of the international archers have, have used this opportunity to take a small break and, and maybe we'll see them come back a, a little bit refreshed, a little bit um, hungry, hungry to perform. And, and maybe that's what we've seen uh, with the scores here in Antalya, which have been largely excellent. Uh, Mete Gazaz, uh, world number five in the Rico men's event, didn't make it through to the finals, but he shot a fantastic qualification round as well uh, on pace to nearly nearly match his, his best to 6.98. And we spoke to him just afterwards, and he was saying how in, in next year he hopes to shoot 7.05, 7.06. And for a recurve archer, that would be uh, the world best, the best ever, the best at the moment, 702. Only two archers in the history have ever both broken that 700 barrier. And Mete Gazoz really trying to become that third. Uh, and maybe this, this break has really done in the world of good. Yeah, interesting that uh, athletes from a lot of sports, including archery, actually taking uh, the... Uh, 
the lockdowns, the global lockdowns around uh, the world uh, as an opportunity to perhaps hone certain other skills, mental preparation, one of them for sure, uh, and also goal setting. Uh, but as, as you mentioned, Chris, uh, this sort of tapering and peaking for competitions is very difficult when you don't know when the competitions are. Uh, and uh, I suppose they'll be looking at you and at World Archery for how they prepare themselves or those who are uh, good enough and lucky enough to have qualified for uh, Tokyo 2021 as it is now. Yeah, obviously, there's a lot of uncertainty over whether the Olympics happen, but all signs towards point towards it, it will happen. It will happen in some form. And, and I think it's a really positive thing and it'll be a really great thing at the end of this whole, um, the whole episode. Uh, yeah, it certainly will be. Well, it looks like the range is now ready for our recurve archers. Two gold medal matches uh, to come in this session. And we are going to start, as you just saw, with the recurve women's final. Chris, uh, in our lineup, we've got uh, another Polish archer and another Spanish archer. Yeah, not the final we were expecting. Uh, top seed in this event was Yashmin Anigaz, the home archer. But instead, we've got two kind of first timers, two two newcomers to this field. Fantastic experience for them, and great to see how they perform uh, in, in the arena. Well, here we go. It's time for the women's gold in the recurve discipline. Target number one, representing Spain, Sandra Servian. Opponent. Target number two, representing Poland, Magdalena Simiskowska. Well, there we have it. Uh, Sandra Chebrian of Spain on target number one and Magdalena Smierkowska of Poland on target number two. Now, interestingly, Chebrian shot a 608 and was ranked 29th after the ranking round, after the 72 arrows, 29th. And... Uh, Smirkowska shot a 640 and ranked 11th, but the Spaniard has been on fire throughout the knockout tournament. Uh, well, look, before we get into that, it's time for set number one. So, Chris, early stages here. It is the Spaniard who will shoot first. Uh, just give us a refresher on how we score recurve archery. Yeah, Rico Vartri, set of three arrows, highest score in the three arrows, uh, will receive two set points. Uh, a tie is one set point to both archers, and it's first to six set points wins the match. Shooting a nine right, followed by a seven right. A big opportunity here already for Smielkowska. Six. Well, a big spread there. Eight. Well, 26 for the Polish archer, Smirkowska. She'll take the first two set points. Uh, Chris, a nervy start from the pair. Uh, nervy from both of them. You could see a, a few wobbles on the front arm. Um, Rico Vartri, all about rhythm, all about process. And he shakes on, on release can really affect how that arrow flies those 70 meters downrange. I'm not surprised with how our Polish Magdalena started. She is the kind of reigning uh, national champion in Poland. Yeah, but uh, not very tight groupings from either of the archers. Uh, but it is the first two set points to Smielkowska. Uh, the Polish national champion. Uh, but Chris, uh, while they clear the range, I just, it's just an interesting point about uh, Chebrian coming through ranking, uh, ranked 29th, but once she got into match play, uh, she was on fire until she got to the semi-finals against Chiara uh, Rabagliati of Italy, uh, which she took in a shoot-off. Yeah, a fantastic mental fortitude to come from 29th in, in, the, in the qualification round all the way to the final and win a shoot-off to get there as well. Just goes to show, you know, the qualification round is very important. It's a really good test of consistency and 72 arrows. If you can 
if you can score well and, and, and repeat your, uh, your performance over, over a long period of time. But when it matters is when you deliver arrows in match play and, and take the wins when you need them. Absolutely. But she's uh, had a difficult start here. It's uh, Chebrian who will get us underway for set number two. At first sight, the draws look very similar, Chris, but there's ever so slight differences in uh, each of these archers' draws. Hey. Yeah, and technique is very individual. The, the important part is to be consistent and deliver uh, the execution of the shot when they release very, very cleanly. Nine. So it's a 28 in this set for... Magdalena Smielkowska and a 27 uh, for Sandra Chebrian of Spain. Uh, Chris, it didn't look like there was anything that really needed a measure there. So uh, this has been a cracking start for the Polish archer. Yeah, much better in this second set. I mean, there were nerves in that first one from both archers. You could see that much better arrows from both here. But she needed a good shot with her last arrow to take the set points, delivered what she needs to do if she wants to take this match. And she can do it with the next set. Yeah, quickest way in recurve archery, nine arrows, but you have to beat your opponent over those nine arrows in blocks of three. So far, Magdalena Smielkowska has done so and can do this in another three arrows. Seen her teammate, Wukash Zabierski, take the compound men's gold just a little bit earlier on today. Will it be two golds? for Poland here in Antalya. Well, Chris, uh, they've been clearing the ranges pretty quick here uh, in Antalya, and we are ready for set number three. So, Chris, talk about pressure here. Chibrian will shoot first in this third set. She's really got to lay down some big scores to put some pressure on her opponent. Yeah, yeah, it's do or die now. If she loses this set, she loses the match. She needs a tie to stay alive, but she wants to win if she really wants a chance to get back in this. Nine. Only three ten so far in this match, so nine, not a bad score. Eight. Especially when your opponent pulls it into the eight. That's the second eight from the pole in this match. Nine. Ten. Recovered well, so all square with one arrow to go. Nine. Marked as a nine, looked very close to the line, but a 27. So a 10 here will do it for Smilkowska. She's put nine. it into the nine. So that's a 27 as well. I think there will be a little measure here, uh, but if the scores remain the same, 27 apiece, the two will share the set points and we will go into a fourth. Chris, your thoughts on that third arrow from Chebrian? Yeah, the arrow just has to break the little black line, which you can't really see on your screen, but kind of outlines each scoring zone, each circle on the target. Um, I think it was close enough to break it. If it breaks that, it'll be scored up to a nine. If she hasn't, then it'll be scored as an eight, and she will lose the match. It's a, it's a critical measure, critical decision down at the target for the judges. Very, very important. I mean, looking at the shooting line at the moment, both athletes actually look like they're ready for a fourth set. 
And it looks like it is all square in that set. So Sandra Chabrain off the mark with one set point, but her opponent, Magdalena Smielkowska, on five set points, just one away from taking gold in the recurve women's final. It is time for set number four. So again, Sandra Chebrian will shoot first, trailing as she does by four set points. And uh, the difference here is all that Smielkowska has to do is match her to get the single point she needs for the win. Nine. Nine. She's looking very relaxed, isn't she, Chris, the uh, Polish archer? Yeah, and unlike compound archery, where you know that big totem, you just kind of stay ahead. This is kind of a, a reset of every set. You know, you're not, you're not looking at the past or the future. It's just this three arrows in front of you. I think it's easier to win from an advantage in Rico archery. Nine. The second nine, a 10 here for Chebrian puts this set out of reach. Eight. Look at that, she's put it on the 7-8 ring. Another 27 for the Spaniard. Big opportunity here, a 10 for the win. It is a 10, and in fact, a 9 would have done it, but that is a clear win for Magdalena Smielkowska. It is a gold for Poland here in the recurve women's final. She wins by seven set points to one. Chris, a second gold medal for Poland here in Antalya. A fantastic performance from the Polish team here at this first world ranking event since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. You can see how happy uh, Magdalena is. She started with two eights in the, in the first set, but shot much better after that. Sets of 28, 27, 28 points to take it in four. Uh, really, really great performance. Uh, you've got to think that uh, Sandra Chibrian of Spain will have been uh, a little bit worried after going 608 in the ranking round, ranked 29th, and I think she'll reflect on a silver medal here in Antalya uh, with a great deal of joy. But it is the gold medal to Magdalena Smilkowska of Poland. Well, three down, uh, just a one to go here uh, in Antalya. Beautiful weather here in early October. Our first world ranking event for a while, certainly since the global pandemic. And it is very shortly time for the compound men's final. You get some great shots from that women's final as a prelude to the men's final. Chris, uh, solid performance from both of them throughout the tournament, but in the end, uh, it was a, a great performance from Smielkowska. Oh, yeah, really impressive. We haven't seen her internationally before, really. Um, I, we did hear that she is the, the reigning Polish national champion, triple national champion, actually, individual mixed team and team. So not really a surprise that she's performing well um, on the archery field, a, a surprise that she's performing with such confidence in a finals arena at an international event. But it's a great introduction, though, not having a crowd, not having quite the same number of archers as you would on this field for a stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup. A little bit smaller, a little bit more relaxed, a little bit quieter, gets her first opportunity to showcase what she can do in front of some cameras. Yeah, absolutely. Great experience, as you say, in front of the TV cameras as well. And you can only beat what's put in front of you. Uh, let's uh, go so and have a chat with Magdalena. How does it feel? Uh, it's, it's a very good feeling. Uh, it's very hot here and uh, I am so happy to be here. Actually. You need some time to settle into that match. Was there some nerves? Uh, yes, of course, uh, as always, but uh, I get it and I am very happy. Does this win? gives you some confidence going forwards. I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> Does this win give you some confidence going forwards? Uh, yes, I think, yes. But I don't know what to say. I am very uh, nervous now and uh, so happy. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.
nervous and happy. But at least it's warm uh, on the coast of Turkey. Uh, it looks absolutely stunning there. And a great uh, performance by Magdalena Smilkuska takes her to gold at the 2020 Antalya International. As we, well, we're well underway on our return to international archery. Time now for the recurve men's gold medal match. Our final action here of this world ranking event. And Chris, uh, another great lineup. Yeah, fantastic final here. We've got Paolo Alessandro and Artem Makhnenko. I'm really excited to see Artem Makhnenko uh, shoot in this final. He's had a fantastic as well, week as well, shot uh, another personal best. Target number one, representing Italy, Alessandro Paoli. <laughs> Opening. Target number two, representing Russian Federation, Artem Makhnenko. Well, there we have it. Uh, as Chris said, uh, Italy's Paoli taking on Russia's Maknenko. Paoli shot a 6.73 in the ranking round, ranked fifth for the knockout stages. Maknenko shot a 6.85 and was ranked second. They've come through the field to make it through to this gold medal match, and they are just about ready to get underway. It's time for set number one of the recurve men's final. Well, the way these two are shooting, this one could be over very quickly indeed. Ten. So 27 for the Italian. Nine. And a 26 for the Russian. So the first two set points go to Alessandro. Paoli. Uh, shaky start from both into the eights. I say shaky, uh, relatively speaking, at the high level of uh, archery. An eight is uh, a low score. But Chris, uh, both settled in pretty quickly. Uh, Paoli perhaps just slightly quicker than Magnenko. Yeah, they're, they're practicing just a few meters down, maybe 20, 30 meters down the field before they enter the finals field of play to shoot this, this match. But the wind conditions will be slightly separate. On the right of this range, there's some... Uh, there's some trees that kind of give uh, a different kind of wind, wind spiral, a, a wind dynamic to the arena. So they've got to kind of adjust to that, learn how it's going to work uh, before they really hit their groove. And, and, and we see the scores go up. I'm expecting to see higher set scores as we go forward. Yeah, certainly Alessandro Paoli will be the happier of the two gentlemen, sneaking the set points by a single point over those first three arrows. <laughs> And it looks like uh, the range is nearly ready. It's time for set number two of the men's final. So Artem Magnenko on target number two will shoot first, trailing by two set points in this final at the Antalya International of 2020. Chris, both archers still shooting very fast indeed. 
Yeah, absolutely. I'm a huge fan of Artem's technique. He, he looks powerful. It's clean, straight to the point, and straight into the 10 with that last shot of the second set. Yeah, puts pressure on uh, Poli. Need to 10 to draw level and share the set points. Eight. And he's put it in to the 8. So that means we will be all square uh, after the first two sets. And uh, Chris, you mentioned about the technique and the, the strength. Uh, what, should, uh, what should the fans be looking out for? What should the audience be looking out for? Well, in my opinion, if you want, uh, if you want an example of great technique, Artem is just that. And actually, so was the man he's talking to there, Stanislav Zabrowski, the 1989 world champion. Um, two fantastic coaches in the field for this match, actually. I believe the other one's uh, Matteo Bissiani, who was uh, uh, a huge Olympian on the Italian team. Fantastic talent and, and fantastic ability in the coaching boxes and on the shooting line. Yeah, so good uh, people to have behind them. Process is one thing, but uh, a lot of what the coaches do is all about uh, keeping the mind calm and the nerves steady in these high tension situations. And, and without an audience, uh, it perhaps is even more tense right on the shooting line. It is all square here, two apiece between Magnenko and Paoli as we go into set number three. So, Chris, a little bit of pressure here uh, on both of these archers, uh, but we are all square, and it is Alessandro Paoli who will shoot first. What's he got to do? Just keep the pressure on? It's like the start of the match again. They're 2-2. Two, two. It's just a shorter match. Four set points now wins. It's a, it's a restart. Um, both comfortable. Both had a chance to know where the arrows are going in these conditions. Need to up the scores now and take the win. Ten. Well, solid start. Nine. Mini advantage for the Italian in this third set. Nine. Ten. Even faster release there from Magnenko. All square again. Nine. So 28 for Paoli. Ten. And another 10 from Magnenko. And another steal of the points Nine. here in the third Nine. set. It's Artem Magnenko who leads after Nine. three by Nine. four Nine. set points Nine. to two. Well, Chris, two tens and a nine in that third set. You talked about technique and strength, but if anything, I think he's shooting even faster. Yeah, and speed. I mean, you do slow down when there's some tension, when there's some pressure on you in the finals field. So if you're shooting fast, you're shooting confidently, and you tend to shoot better as well. And I truly believe Artem Magnenko is going to be a fantastic archer in, in, in international archery for a long time. Um, he shot a personal best in qualification here, 72 arrows, first time over 680 in international competition. It's a huge achievement, and he's delivering now in the finals field as well. I think he's going to win some big events before he's done in this sport. And as we switch over to the other side of the shooting line, it doesn't look like Alessandro Paoli's uh, under any significant pressure, certainly not from his facial expressions. Is there anything you can pick out in the technique that's just pulling him astray? I don't really think he's astray. He's just getting his confidence. So he's only 21 years old, and he's not been on the senior circuit. He shot a few youth competitions, new into the Italian team, the Italian senior team this year. On, on that last hour of the, uh, of the previous set, he was not in the middle when he released because you could see a little adjustment from his front hand uh, as he let go. And that just means his subconscious is adjusting where the arrow is going to fly and land. Oh, but he's doing well. He's doing well. He just needs to up the scores a tiny bit to get back into this. Well, we're underway on set number four of the Recurve Men's Gold Medal Match. A nine to get things underway for Paoli of Italy, who is trailing by two set points. Yeah. Very quick shot there from Alessandro Paoli, getting a bravo from his coach. Hey. And the door has opened for the Italian. 
Nine. It's going to be marked as a nine, so a 28 has put this one out of reach for Magnenko, and we are going to be all square again. Nine. So, Chris, a fascinating match, and again, I think they're shooting even faster. I think Poli's just increased his speed as well. Yeah, and either waiting for the other to make a mistake. They both really want this. They both are confident that they can take the win. And it's great to see in this finals arena from two young archers um, going out there and trying to win it. It certainly is. Poli taking the uh, early lead, two set points to zero up after the first. Magnenko leveling in the second and then taking the lead in the third. And this time in the fourth, it was Paoli who's leveled things up. A real topsy-turvy match. And there is one more set to go. Uh, a thrilling finish to the 2020 Antalya International here in, on the coast in Turkey. And the scores are getting ever so slightly better. All square after four, it's time for set number five of the men's final. <laughs> it's been building to a crescendo, hasn't it, Chris? Uh, these four gold medal matches uh, culminating in the Eureka of men's gold medal match. And, uh, well, who's going to win this one? I oh, would definitely save the best for last. Let's see if Arsene Magnenko can show that same confidence, that same clean delivery that he has throughout this match and, 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 and defeat this this young first-time finalist. Nine. So in to the nines for the Italian. Ten. Great response from Magnenko. Now the pressure is on a little bit. Paoli has got to get a big score here. Ten. And he has indeed got a ten. You can feel the pressure switching from side to side. Another quick shot right on the line. Another 10 and a 29 to finish for Paoli, but it's in Artem Magnenko's hands. Can he get the 10 and the win? He has, and he's finished with a perfect 30 to take the gold here in Antalya. Artem Magnenko shoots. A 6-4 win over Alessandro Paoli for the title in Antalya. Chris, you said we saved the best for last. What a brilliant finish from Artem Magnenko. Yeah, fantastic shooting. It's taken him five sets to get there, but a perfect 30. And each of those arrows was delivered with such calm confidence. And they deserved the 10s they got. And there was confirmation from uh, the target judge of the three tens. And there is confirmation of the title in Antalya going to Artem Magnenko in the recurve men's final. Holy having to settle for the silver medal here in Antalya. And that does indeed conclude our actions a really thrilling match Paoli taking the early lead Magnenko there pegging him back in the second and then going on to take the lead after three leading 4-2 but Paoli came back in the fourth to level things up and set up a thrilling fifth set which Magnenko took with a perfect 30 Well, brilliant performances here uh, in uh, Antalya. Uh, the compound women's medals where they went to Marcos of Spain in gold, Kanzeva over Russia with silver, Avdieva, her teammate, Russian teammate, taking the bronze. In the compound men's, it was Poland Zabierski taking gold from home favourite Evren Chiran of Turkey. And Anton Buliev with the bronze medal. And it's a win. Here is Andrea Marcos.
ojalá todas las competiciones estuvieran, estuvieran igual de organizadas de bien como aquí en Turquía. You finished very strong, very confident in that arena. La verdad es que las finales siempre son muy tensas y e intentas ir flecha a flecha. Eh, sí que es cierto que igual las últimas se me dan algo mejor porque pues, ya vas perdiendo los nervios iniciales y pues ojalá supiera empezar y acabar igual. What was it like to compete with the health restrictions here in Antalya? Yo creo que las medidas sobre el COVID han llegado para quedarse durante bastante tiempo y pues poco a poco nos iremos acostumbrando al uso de la mascarilla y a las distancias durante la competición, pero al final es eh, a, fa eh, a favor de todos, por la salud de todos y es algo que debemos respetar. Thank you so much. Gracias. Muy bien, Andrea Marcosti, Compound Women's Gold Medalist. The recurve women's gold went to Smiel Kuska of Poland from Chibrian of Spain and Bowery of Italy. The recurve's men went to the Russian Artem Magnenko against Alessandro Poli of Italy in the final. And it was Baza Zarpov of Russia taking the bronze. Chris, uh, thank you very much for your insight. And thanks to all of you for watching this ranking round in Antalya. It's official. We're back.